God had told Jeremiah there was a wrath of punishment coming that not even Moses and Samuel could stand before God and advocate for them. <laughs> God had delivered the Israelites out of Egypt and made them prosper. How could they go back to their wicked ways? Jeremiah's warnings of God's wrath upon the nations put his life in grave danger. Sometimes purpose will put your life in danger. There were plots to have him killed, and he was put in jail and tortured. We're going to look at Jeremiah 1, 4 through 14. <clears throat> and it reads, The word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Alas, sovereign Lord, I said, I do not know how to speak. I am too young. This is when doubt <laughs> is telling him that he can't do what God has called him to do. But the Lord said to me, do not say I am too young. You must go to everyone I send you to and say whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you. And other interpretation says, do not be afraid of their faces. For I am with you. I'll rescue you, declares the Lord. I got your back. <laughs> I'm sending you, so I got you. Then the Lord reached out his hand and touched my mouth and said to me, I have put my words in your mouth. See, today I appoint you over nations and kingdoms to uproot and tear down, to destroy and overthrow, to build and to plant. I probably would have ran at that part. <laughs> like all of this. The word of the Lord came to me. What do you see, Jeremiah? I see the branch of an almond tree, I replied. See, God is preparing him. He's not just sending him out. He's preparing him for what he's sending him to. The Lord said to me, you have seen correctly. I am watching to see that my word is fulfilled. So I'm not just going to send you out, but I'm going to prepare you so that I know that what I'm sending you to, you are prepared for. The word of the Lord came to me again. What do you see? I see a pot that is boiling. I answered. It is tilting towards us from the north. The Lord said to me, from the north, disaster will be poured out on all who live in the land. This is my first point. Purpose will remind you of the beauty God sees in you. God can call anybody to fulfill the purpose, but he called you. In verse 6, Jeremiah tells God, Alas, sovereign Lord, I said, I do not know how to speak. This is doubt. I am too young. But clearly, God called the right man for the job because Jeremiah went into the trenches of Jerusalem to cry out, thus said the Lord, to warn them of the God wrath or, or the wrath that God would come to punish them for the backsliding unless they turned from their wicked ways. This was also the same man that went on to write the books of Kings, the book of Lamentations and Jeremiah. So even though he had doubt, he had purpose. He thought that he was too small for this purpose, but God knew that he had called the right man for the job. It's natural to have doubt. In Exodus 3.11, Moses asked God, but Moses said to God, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out? Later in the chapter, when Moses asked, who should I say is sent me? God said, tell them, I am who I am. So you have to remember yourself also, who sent you, that we're not operating in purpose off of our own will, but we are operating in purpose off of God's will, after, off of him sending us. This is not anything that we are putting together. This is not off of our own strength, but we're going off of the strength of God. 
I am who I am. And if you want to unpack for anyone who I am is, you can simply say he's the one that created the earth. He's the beginning and the end. He's Jacob's father, the father of Abraham and Isaac. He's the one that parted the Red Sea as well. So sometimes you have to preach that to yourself when doubt begins to settle, set in. Can you really do this task that God has called you to? Absolutely. Because the great I am sent me. It's natural to have doubt. It's natural to have doubt. Don't you rest there. Don't allow doubt to talk you out of purpose. In Exodus 4, Moses said to the Lord, pardon my servant. Lord, I have never been eloquent, neither in the past nor since you have spoken to your servant. I am slow with speech and tongue. The Lord said to him, who gave human beings their mouths? Who makes them deaf or mute? Who gives them sight or make them blind? Is it not I, the Lord? Now go, I will help you speak and will teach you what to say. He's going to prepare you and he's going to sustain you. But Moses said, pardon your servant, Lord. Please send someone else. <laughs> Moses went on to lead Israelites out of Egypt and across the Red Sea. Moses taught the Israelites how to trust God in the wilderness. God pre performed miracles through Moses. And the list goes on of the things that Moses would go on to do. But he had doubt in the beginning, right? He had doubt, but nevertheless, he still trusted God. Don't allow doubt to cause your joints to freeze up and not move forward in your purpose. For point two. When I was studying, God dropped the word in my heart while I was writing down some notes. And he said, what is sustaining the root? Like a tree, you have to be grounded in God so you are empowered and sustained. Let's read Jeremiah 20 to unpack this. Jeremiah 20, verse 7 reads, you deceived me, Lord, and I was deceived. You overpowered me and prevailed. I am ridiculed all day long. Everyone mocks me whenever I speak. I cry out, proclaiming violence and destruction. So the word of the Lord has brought me insult and reproach all day long. And at this point, Jeremiah is exhausted. Because he's gone to the gates and he has told Judah, he's told Israel, he's like, you guys are going to be condemned. Fire is going to come down. You guys have been backsliding. And this is the wrath of God that is going to come down on your heads. And at this point, he has been beaten. He's been put in jail. He's been isolated. He can't get married. He's alone. He's alone. And at this point, I could just picture Jeremiah just on one knee telling God, I am exhausted. I've been walking in my purpose. I, I'm exhausted now. I could just see him in turmoil, just wrestling with God about what he's been called to do. But I love that he's talking to God and not confiding in anybody else about it. I like that he's been transparent with God because the one you should absolutely be transparent with is God. The one you should absolutely be able to go and pull yourself out into is God. So the fact that he would go and lean into his daddy and say, look, I'm, I'm at my wits in. Enough is enough. Like they've, they've, they've conspired to kill me. They put me in a jail. I've done everything you asked me to. I've traveled to the different parts, the different nations. You've told me to go tell them. And I've even advocated for them. And they still want me dead. He's exhausted. Because when you are operating in your purpose and you don't see anything producing, it is exhausting. But he went to his father. He didn't go with anybody else. He went to his father, the one he knew he could trust, the one that prepared him for the purpose, the one that sustained him, the one that trained him, the one that nurtured him. He went to his father and he transparently, he just transparently, verse nine. But if I say I will not mention his word or speak any more in his name, 
His word is in my heart like a fire. You can't even fight it. You can't even fight against your purpose because it's going to continue to show up. It's going to continue to call you. It's going to continue to draw at your heart. It's like a fire shut up in my bones. I am weary of holding it in. Indeed, I cannot. You can't run from it. I'm sorry to tell you. It's not a hat that you can just take off and put down. Somebody's dependent on you. A generation is dependent on you. People are dependent on you to continue to give God your yes. Your yes and your yes. Your yes. And God got you. He's your strengthener. He's the lifter up of your head. Whoa. 10 says, I hear many whispering, terror on every side. Where's a friend when you need one? (laughs) Denounce him. Let's denounce him. All my friends are waiting for me to slip, saying perhaps he will be deceived. Then we will prevail over him and take our revenge on him. See, it was okay when he was prophesying what they wanted to hear. But when he started speaking damnation because their actions were not lining up with the will of God. Then they wanted to slaughter him. But they started worshiping false gods. They started putting their own children in pits and offering them up to their God. After God had delivered them out of the lands that they were in and set them up to prosper. Everyone won't be satisfied with your purpose. Everyone won't be satisfied with where you stand with God. Because your obedience to God <laughs> means that you cannot be obedient to everything else. I'm sorry to tell you that. You might lose some people along the way. I'm sorry to tell you that. You might have to change a career. You might lose some income. But your obedience to God <laughs> has to be your priority in obedience to God has to be your priority has to be the thing that you seek after your obedience points back to God it's the reason that we were created to worship and to adore him how dare us get on this earth and want to shrink back and tell God that he can't use us for what he has purposed us for who are we to say that So do not be afraid of many of their faces. Do not be afraid of the rejection that you may receive. Do not be afraid when they don't understand. You were making six figures over there. Now you're doing non-for-profit and you don't know when you're going to get paid. (laughs) But God. But God. But God. I am who I am. He got you. He got you. You were making six figures and you're leaving to go teach youth. You want to be a teacher? Did you hear about what they make? But they need me in the classroom. They need me there because I'm secretly praying over them. They need me there because I'm a lighthouse in the darkness. They need me there. It won't always make sense. Man can't connect the dots because you don't understand the completeness of God. I work a nice job making everything I wanted to make. So you want to go and be in a women's shelter and help them out, help teach them how to apply for resumes and jobs and stuff? Absolutely. Because it is who I was called to be. A voice in a room where darkness is echoing death in their ears. Where the past keeps speaking to them of what they can't be. Where the past keeps reminding them of what they came from. God is calling me to be the light. Your presence will part rivers. Your presence will set somebody up to believe more of themselves. When the past is whispering death, God is putting you in a room to be life and light. And man will not understand why you are who you are, but God has called you to be. I pray that you write grants and they be approved. I pray that money and resources will be your portion. I pray that every good thing that God has called you to do, that there be no lack. I pray that your bills don't go missing. They won't be interrupted. You 
might not have all your heart desires, but I pray you have peace. And I pray that people come alongside you in this journey and love you to life. We have enough people speaking death. I pray that people come alongside you and speak life. I pray that they be a, a voice of God that can talk, talk, talk you forward when your flesh want to speak you out of your purpose. Come on, 11, he said, but the Lord is with me like a mighty warrior. In the same breath, he started praising God. I, in the same breath, look, I, I don't feel like this. I can, I can do it anymore. But in the same breath, but the Lord is like a mighty warrior. So my persecutors will stumble and not prevail. They will fall and thoroughly be disgraced. Their dishonor will never be forgotten, Lord. Almighty, who examined the righteousness, this is why it matters what you're rooted in. Because when doubt sets in, it's who you rooted in that will get you back in alignment. Back in alignment. Hey, same as it's streaking. God, what do you want me to do? Should I start back putting in resumes? No, back in alignment. My degrees will put me at a boardroom with six figures easy, but God is saying, back in alignment. Hey, somebody is dependent on your alignment. Somebody is dependent on what you're rooted in. When you stick with purpose, when it does not make sense, when you stick with purpose, when the money's not there, and the friends are gone. The luxury is not there. They're prosecuting you. They're talking about you. But will you be aligned with God? So they slay me. Yeah, well, I trust you. Lord Almighty, who examined the righteous and probed the heart and the mind, let me see your vengeance. Not my will, but your will be done. Come on, sometimes you got to look at yourself in the mirror and encourage yourself. Not my will, not my will. Because, see, look, my will will derail me. Not my will, God, but let your will be done, who you've called me to be. Let that be done. I don't want to speak my words over my destiny, but I want what you have for me, who you've created me to be. I want that. I want peace, like a river. Sound mind. I want your glory to fill the place, Lord God. Everywhere my feet go, Lord God, I want you to go with me. I want you to open doors that no man can shut. I want relationships, Lord God, that you have appointed. Let your glory be with me, Father. Let your glory be with me, Lord. When Jeremiah became weary, he didn't stay weary. He wrestled with God, but in the same breath, he praised him. He praised him. I wrote down this reminder, Luke 18, 27. But he said, the things which are impossible with men are possible with God. I wanted, to be, I wanted that to be the last scripture that I'll leave with you today. But he said, the things which are impossible with men are possible with God. You're heavy with purpose. But it's possible with God. If you write it down on paper, what God has spoken to you to do, it probably will not make sense. That's okay. Because no one man can sit down and unpack the full scriptures of God and tell you every detail and like 
I mean, no one knows the full essence of God. So it might not make sense to them and don't expect it to. But God wants you to know that the I am, that I am is sending you forth. And don't be afraid of their faces because he got you back. He will come and rescue you. You'll be peace in the storm. He'll be a friend like no other. He'll be a confidant. He'll be a father when you need one, when you need to be transparent, when you just need to let it all hang out. He'll be there right there with you. And the Holy Spirit will sustain you and help you to stay in alignment because what you're rooted in will help you to stand in the storms. God, I thank you, Father, for the word that you have given us, Lord God. I thank you, Father, that we have purpose, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, that you're going to help us, Lord God, unpack our purpose for our lives, Father. Father, I thank you that you're going to send people, Lord God, to us, Father, to help speak life in the name of Jesus, Lord God. I thank you that you're going to set us in a community of resources that are going to help us to dream, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, that you are a loving Savior. You are Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end of all things and everything. Everything is possible with you and through you, Lord God. Father, I pray that everything we put our hands to will glorify you, Lord God. Hallelujah, Father. I pray, Lord, that when we have doubt in our hearts, Father, I pray that you be the lifter up of our heads in the name of Jesus, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, that you restore our hearts, Father, that we see who you have called us to be because the call is beautiful and you saw our beauty when you called us, Lord God. And I thank you for that, Lord God. When we want to point to others and have them to do what you have called us to do, I pray that you remind us of why you called us, of who we are, and of whose we are. I thank you for your grace, your mercy, your love, and your kindness, Father, that you continually bestow on our lives, Father. I thank you for health. I thank you for peace. I thank you, Lord God, You are worthy and worthy to be praised. It is in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Your word says that surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life. Does anybody have a surely praise in here today? Heavenly Father, we love you. We honor you. We thank you for such an incredible message on today. We seal this message. We seal this worship in your love is your presence. Thank you for following us everywhere that you take us. Goodness and mercy in the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody, somebody say amen. Amen, amen, amen. Such an incredible, oh, can we do a little bit better for Pastor Brandon? Such an incredible message. Amen. Amen. That is a message. I'm telling you, I will have that on repeat today, today. I mean, all throughout the week. But uh, guys, thank you so much for worshiping with us today. My name is Pastor Anthony. I'm one of the pastors here. Me and my beautiful bride have the privilege of being lead pastors here. If this is your first time joining us for worship, come on home, folks. Can we put our hands together for all of our first time guests? I just want to take a moment and invite you to our Connect card. Our Connect card does exactly what it says. It, it gets you connected to the house. Come on, God is speaking to you about purpose today. What better way is to get connected to the community here and see what God has all in store for you in this season, amen? So just take some time out. Maybe our online fa our family, just click on the description box. We have all of the information right there for you. A credible team who's looking to get connected with you, amen? Amen. Well, hey, family, let's stay in this posture of worship with the breaking of our ties and the giving of our offering. All of that information will be on the screen right behind me for our online family. It'll be right there in, in the description box. But uh, I want to recap last Sunday, family. Come on. We we didn't gather in-house, but we were still serving. We were still worshiping our, our God. I want to recap Serve Sunday. Can we make some noise for Serve Sunday? 
Amen, amen. Just a beautiful time of actually getting outside of the four walls of the church. And the reason why I'm recapping Serve Sunday, even right here for the giving of our, uh, bringing of our tithes and the giving of our offering, we were able to partner with Be The Good because of your yes. It's through your generosity, church, that we are making a difference in the community, in our neighborhoods right here. Amen. Come on. I'm so happy to say we were able to pack over 600 sandwiches. Come on, somebody. We, we were able to restock over 17 pantries. We were able to restock them with food. This food family is going out into the community and changing the lives of the people that we call our neighbor. But I'm saying all of that family, when we give to God, God can multiply it. When we give to God, I always love to say this. A seed is always better in God's dirt than in our hand. When you plant that seed, God begins to multiply it. So family, I want to continue to encourage you. I want to continue to all, 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 just commend you. Let's continue to lean forward with our giving. And even on top of that, uh, we, 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 we're, throughout the year, we have many initiatives that you can actually give to. So, so e even to celebrate Pentecost Sunday, come on, somebody, we're, 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 actually, we're actually moving into our initiative for our next gen family. I love how Pastor Brenda talked about pouring into our next gen. Come on, we want to create a space for where our next gen, our kids, our family, where they're safe, but the presence of God is there. Come on, somebody. We want to create a culture for our next gen that's so counter to what the world is giving them that we want to create a culture where they can be and engage into the presence of God. Throughout the next few weeks, family, if you go on the website, you, you'll have the opportunity to actually pour directly into a next gen. Whether you serve, but even for this moment, you can actually give to this initiative. And let's get ready to see what God is getting ready to do. I'm telling you, for the uh, upcoming months, I'm telling you, we're going to be sharing some stuff with the church. I'm super excited what we're getting ready to do for our next gen. Come on, this church is all about next gen. Amen? Amen. Let's pray over the offering family. Father God, we love you. We honor you. We thank you so much for this offering. We do it simply at this, Father. We lift it up towards you for the offering, for the tithe, that it gets multiplied. We lift it up. Let Celebration Church be a vehicle that you can distribute through into the hands that's in need. We thank you so much, Father. Do what only that you can do is bless it. It is in Jesus' name. Come on, somebody shout amen, amen, amen. Well, family, right before we dismiss, I just have one announcement I'm, I'm super excited about today. Today is Next Step Sunday. Come on, make some noise for Next Step Sunday. Next Step Sunday is happening directly after, after this service. 10 to 15 minutes, just stop by. We're going to be in Theater 15. Me and Pastor Brendan will be there. Here's what Next Step Sunday is all about. Come on, maybe God is speaking to you today about purpose. What is your next step? What is your next step of getting connected into the community right here? We would love to speak to you about the next step. Come on, everybody has a next step, but we want your next step to be your best step. And with your best step in Christ, God has a plan and a purpose for you. Come talk to us. We would love to chit chat with you, pray over you, but also form community around you and see you walk directly into your next step. Amen. Amen. Well, hey, family, let me pray for you for the benediction. May the, may the Lord bless you. May he keep you. May he shine his face among you. May he always give us peace as he's turned his countenance towards us. It's through all of our relationship that peace is being released, even through this week. May you always be with, be with us, Father. Is it in Jesus' name? Come on, somebody shout amen. 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 I love you guys so much. Enjoy your week, family. Have an incredible week. <laughs>